moment we're very much restricted to the information we have on our customers, but as open banking really takes hold, there'll be information between banks, between non-banks, you know, the, the GAFAs that we talked about as well. So I think it will be a huge impact on the lending market. So I think initially it should help to reduce the amount of sharing of documents and having to things, manual pay slips, manual bank statements, having to do various numbers of um, ID and B of the customer, it should eradicate a lot of that because you'll be able to get the data at source, which means that the customer should have a much smoother journey, should take some time out of the process and just lead to a whole better customer experience. I think open banking has the potential to level the playing field uh, in the lending market between incumbent lenders and new lenders because it's effectively opening up the data and obviously in lending data and access to that information is absolutely vital to make the right decisions. But incumbents will try to adopt the technology that's coming earlier than those who are coming into the market to stay ahead of the competition and the question really is are they able to stay ahead of the competition? Can they use adoptive type strategies? I.e. it could be a combination by the way not just of adopting the technology, but of buying the companies with the technology and incorporating them into their structures. Or will they be disrupted by someone coming from left field um, and changing the business model completely, um, as has happened to, uh, to retailing and uh, to bookstores, for example? Really think about it this way. With open banking, a bank, which is tasked with making a credit risk decision, now has a treasure trove of data and analytics open to it. If you look at how lending works right now, then it's typically based on historic performance. So you go to a credit agency and you get a credit score of um, how I've paid back my loans in the past. It's not really a predictor of future performance and it doesn't really give some real true insight into how I use and spend my money. It just talks about how I borrow my, my money. So I think what open banking will provide is that opportunity for the lender to dive into the bank account see what I do on a month-by-month -month basis, validate my income, validate my expenditure, and it really provide a, a, a true insight to the heart of my uh, financial affairs. I think it's interesting that so far there hasn't been much uh, publicity around uh, open banking for the consumer. I think the consumer is still pretty much in the dark about what open banking is, what, what it means for them, whether it's going to help them, um, and how they can, they can benefit from it. Explaining open banking, it's, in my opinion, a very slippery slope, and it's something that you want to be very sensitive to um, when explaining to um, an individual that may not be familiar with the concept. Um, presenting it and approaching it in that you're going to allow your information to be more accessible to the right channels, and that in return is going to offer a better experience, a better product, and better options for you. doesn't mean that your information is going to be spread out to um, the whole world to have or to see um, when it's contained into um, a focus area um, at, at your willingness it's going to provide some good options and a good experience for you as the client. I think stage two longer term I would like to see open banking be used to educate customers and get them financially fit way in advance of them even starting the mortgage process. So their open banking data could be used to teach them how to have a really good credit score, how to manage their finances in a way that makes them a very good mortgage application when they get there, how to use their credit effectively so that they're not damaging their own credit profile, that kind of stuff. So I would like it to be used as a tool to make customers more financially fit. There's always people that that service won't work for, but if I, if I draw the analogy with um, in the insurance industry and telematics. Um, younger people these days um, will find that the insurance cost for a car is probably as much as the car. And therefore, in order to get the insurance down, they need to put a telematics box in place. And they have to share that information in order to get cheap insurance. Now, the same thing will apply for certain demographics where they have to share their bank account information and their transactional information in order to get a loan. There'll be other people who will just say, no, that doesn't work for me. I'm never going to share that. Personally, I'd never share any of my uh, driving uh, style to get a cheaper insurance product because you know, I don't really have to, but there are demographics that will need to do that. The question I think we have is how many customers will want to do it initially. There's a, there's a trust aspect about giving your information to another organisation, so the, to whomever the, the, the information is given, they'll have to trust that organisation and us to make sure we give the information in the right way.